Welcome to Cebu Expat by Matt Wilkie, discussing expat life in the Philippines. Who said it was going to be easy to move to the Philippines? Uh, the reason I say this is because a lot of people will actually say, oh yeah, it's this or that. The Philippines is one of those countries if you do everything by the book and pretty much keep yourself to yourself, you don't have any problems. Um, and I say pretty much because De La Joy murder case, for example, was an expat that did keep himself to himself, um, didn't stop getting accused of it, although he hadn't done it, <laughs> wasn't anywhere near it, um, but the media needed a foreigner. Um, so I'd say those things don't happen all the time, but they can happen. Um, but generally, you will find the Philippines is pretty easy going. Where you'll have problems is probably financial, um, isolation. Um, with isolation, you feel a bit disconnected from other people. Um, some people like that, like myself. Um, but other people get frustrated with, with having a you know, conversation piece, um, you know, because I like to discuss politics, but most people don't. Uh, it's not just in the Philippines, but generally. So it's important that you find people you can connect with, even if you don't see them regularly, like once a month, it's fine. You know, it, it's just something to look forward to and keep you busy. Keeping busy is the most important thing. I mean, a lot of people that retire there get into ruts. Um, I hear a lot of the conversation pieces based around their partner say, it's dangerous, I'm worried, I'm scared, blah, blah, blah. You're getting boxed in. Um, a lot of Filipinos generally don't want you doing stuff. Um, there's this fear you're going to find somebody else. There is this obsession that of insecurity. So I would say don't let people box you in, but also be aware of why they're doing it. It's not vindictive or anything like that. It's just a case of they're they're insecure. Um, but generally, as long as you prepare things, you understand that. The electricity fluctuates, so it's going to blow your electrics on a regular basis. You're going to have ants eat all your electronics. You're going to go and buy stuff that's substandard and struggle to get good stuff. Um, you're going to buy power tools which are counterfeit and poor quality. And you're probably thinking, yeah, whatever. <laughs> More for you. Well, the, the fact is, be aware, it is normal. Um, so, if you want power tools and stuff, bring them with you. If you want uh, good furniture, get it made. Prepare yourself for an adjustment in where you normally find standards sit. Because what you have is, in the West, we have these things called... Um, trading standards and other bodies, governing bodies, they make sure electronics are safe, um, everything you buy is to a specific standard and it's sold for a specific task and if it's stated it does that, then it has to do it. None of that is needed in the Philippines, nobody abides by it. Um, there is plenty of cheap places to buy tat. And you'll find the expats will tell you where they shop. I'm not put, putting their names on here as a uh, to save me getting in trouble, but um, one of them involves the name King <laughs> and CDs. But the um, point here is lower your standards. It's not going to be easy that transition. You'll find that you'll get there and go. I wish I'd shipped out this. I wish I'd have got that. I didn't know this. Don't make it the end and end all. Just put it down. Okay, 
write it on my list. When I get um, back to US, UK, wherever you came from, um, make sure you stick it in the ballot buying box. The other side of this being, okay, I know John's going back to the US, UK, or whatever next Thursday. Get in to buy it for you and get him a nice couple of beers and stuff to make sure that he'll do that for you. <laughs> but the whole point here is remember now, it is not going to be easy. Um, you'll, you'll enjoy it. Um, but the important bit is p preparation saves frustration. Uh, but also be aware when you get frustrated to cancel it out because it's, I remember, um, a course I did years and years ago, um, because when I, um, first left school and stuff, I struggled to get work. I went into college and stuff, but one of the courses I did, uh, related to the, uh, management of establishments. And one of the things that they brought up was silent irritants. Silent irritants are like ashtrays. Ashtrays, you know, I don't smoke. I won't sit at the table with an ashtray. So there you go. You know it bothered me straight away. Um, things like that are called silent irritants. But it's a bit like that motorbike that goes past you at 2 a. Well, normally at probably about 6 a.m. as they're going to work with the tin pot exhaust pipe with a pop 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 that guy is going to irritate you every day you're not going to be able to change his motorbike unless you buy him a new exhaust system and arguing about it with him is not going to fix the problem um the easiest solution is actually moving away from that window or finding a way you know sleep in another room or whatever because that will bug you more and more over time but at the same time there's nothing you do about it don't let it bother you. What you need to concentrate on is making sure it doesn't bother you and finding a way around it. You're moving to a new country. They have different standards. Um, my saying on this is if you're not happy with the standards that you like, lower them because that's the easiest alternative. It's easier to adjust things to the expectation of not getting what you want. Um, because then you plan to get what you want. If you put something in for repair and they say it'll be ready tomorrow, expect it in a week. <laughs> you know, these are the things that happen because I've had it with uh, somebody taking an alternator off a vehicle. The guy was gone for two weeks. There was no reason for him to be gone, but it was a case of he was going uh, scrapyard to scrapyard hunting one down. But he doesn't tell you. They just say it's not ready yet. That's the only thing they tell you. That is normal. This is why it's not going to be easy. You need to adapt and learn to adapt to the headaches that people will create that they don't even notice. They know it ain't going to be ready tomorrow. Um, it's like that phrase, in a while. In a while means nothing. Tomorrow means nothing. Um, in a week, it's reasonable. So if there's somebody says tomorrow, just turn around and say, do you have the parts? Do you, you know? And they'll go, no. So would it be better to come back next week? And you'll probably get a better response. All right, thanks for watching.